so what we're going to do right now just to show how powerful this is what what we'll end up doing is we're gonna do conversions figure out what a certain area segment area is, or a certain arc length is for a certain degree or for a certain radian okay so let's take this down Other types of questions that we can do unit conversion for using ratios and one type of question you end up getting in mathematics is they're gonna give you a circle okay and they're gonna give you a certain radius and they're going to say what's the area shaded area of part of a circle okay so let's do our calculations let's do one problem here where you'll see how this works and how powerful this is so let's draw a circle now I'm not going to put this on a grid I'm just going to draw an arbitrary circle okay again I'm bringing out my little floss and putting this on it so I'm just going to draw a random circle So we have a circle and let's say our radius for this circle is 12. Okay, hopefully you can see that, but let's say the radius is 12. Okay. Right, so that's 12. And the question is going to be, if we've traveled Let's say that's 110 degrees. 110 degrees. Then what's the area of the shaded region here? Right. How much have we covered? Now, the connection, the ratio that we're going to use to do this conversion, to figure out this calculation is what we know about an area of a circle. The formula for area of a circle is pi r squared, right? Now, I gave this degree measure, I gave the, I gave the angle measure in degrees, right? So what we do is, for your unit conversion, for your co figuring out this calculation is, we're gonna use the same principle as we did with degrees over radians, but we're going to use area over the angle. So the conversion that you do is area of a circle is pi r squared. R squared. Pi r squared is for a whole circle, the area of a whole circle, right? If you go the whole circle, you're either going 360 degrees or 2 pi. Or 2 pi. Right? This is the unit conversion we have. If you write this in equal notation and proportionality, right? You would have pi r squared equals to 360 degrees or 2 pi. I just wrote it as a fraction straight out. This ratio, this proportionality, this ratio has to be proportional to whatever we have here, right? So I'm just going to write it as general. It would be area divided by angle. Okay. 
super important. You end up using this a lot for calculations anyway. Okay. So let's see how this works for this, what our answer is going to be. This is the general ratio that we have, general unit conversion equation that we have. So whatever area you want to figure out, all you got to do is punch in the angle here. Conversely, if I gave you the area, you could figure out how many degrees or radians you've got. So let's do this calculation and we'll do another one with, uh, with doing an area and figuring out what the angle is. Okay. So for this, my radius is 12, right? I gave the angle measurement in degrees, so I'm going to use 360. I'm not going to use 2 pi. If I gave the angle measurement in radians, you would have used 2 pi and not degrees, right? So I hope you, it, it makes sense when I put an or here, 360 or 2 pi. It really depends if you're doing your calculations in radians or degrees. So what we're going to do is we're going to go for this calculation, we're going to go pi 12 squared divided by, we're in degrees, so I'm going to put 360 here, is equal to area, that's what I want to figure out, x over the area for what portion do I want, the portion that covers 110 degrees. Right. And again, what you do is you cross multiply. You kick this up. That guy just goes up, right? So again, we're going to need, we need a calculator for this. So this is going to be pi times 12 squared. 12 squared is 144. So pi times 144 times 110 divided by 360 so the area this area for the segment is 138.2 if this was meters let's call this meters so x is equal to 138.2 meters squared if this was the radius was in meters pretty powerful ratios we're gonna do one for arc length as well but before we do that let's do one where I've given you the area and you want to figure out the um, the angle right so what we'll do is draw another circle so let's put our circle dot here and bring this guy Oops, my pen slipped out of my little knot here. So it's not going to be a beautiful circle for this one, but it's okay. a little slippage here so let's say again the, the one thing that you do need for this is your radius right so let's do a radius of call this 25 okay let's say we've gone all the way down here the radius is still 25 right it's a circle the radius is the same Let's say we want to figure out the angle in radians, okay? And I'm going to say the area here. So let's say the area that I've given you here is 1407, right? Point, whatever, 14.07.
So let's say the area I've given you here is 1,407. So that's the area that we have here. And I want you to figure out the angle in radians. So what we end up doing is we're going to use the same ratio, the same equation. But instead of using 360, I'm going to use 2 pi. Because in the question, I would say, I want the answer to be in radians. Okay. So what we have is we're going to have pi r squared, which is 25 squared divided by 2 pi has to equal I've given the area we have the area this is our unknown the angle so this is going to be 1407 over X and the angle that we figure out is going to be in radians because we use 2 pi not degrees so if we do our cross multiplication this guy's gonna kick up and that guy's gonna go there and then this guy's gonna go down but I'll do it in two steps so you see what's going on so this is going to be pi times 250 squared X is equal to 2 pi times 1407 and keep in mind I could have killed the pies right here right and then I want to get X by itself so I'm going to divide by pi 25 squared I'm going to divide by pi 25 squared okay and what I'm going to do I'm going to kill the pies right now so what we end up having is 2 times 1407 divided by 25 squared which is equal to 4.5 radians because that's what we're doing right we're doing our measurements in radians so that ended up killing that so x is equal to 4.5024 but we're not that accurate with this right because we're losing information actually we're not losing information because we killed the pies so it's 4.50 to 4 radians that's the angle we've gone okay pretty sweet yeah let's do set up a same kind of ratio conversion but instead of trying to figure out what an area is and how far what the angle is we've traveled for a certain area let's do it for arc length right the distance traveled let's draw another circle now what we'll do is uh, I'm gonna use the same angle as I did in the first one um, that way it's actually there's a connection between the previous calculation and this calculation right so let's draw a circle again So what we had was 110 degrees so I'm gonna draw this and I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna say this is 110 degrees and this was 12 I believe 12 right so what I want to figure out now is what's the distance from here to here right what is that distance so what we end up doing the 
the ratio, the, the equation we set up is, if you recall, the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. So instead of having pi, pi r squared up top and the angle in the bottom, we're going to have 2 pi r and the angles in the bottom. So the formula is 2 pi r over 360 degrees or 2 pi depending if the angle you've been given is in degrees of radians, right? And this is going to be equal to arc length divided by air, uh, angle. Okay. So for this calculation, we want to find out what the arc length is when we travel 110 degrees for a circle of radius 12. So I'm going to use 2 pi r. That's a given. That's for sure we have to use that. The angle is in degrees, so I'm going to kill the 2 pi. I'm going to put 360 down here. I've been given the angle. I'm going to put 110 here. I'm going to figure out what the arc length is. So it's going to be 2 pi times 12 divided by 360 must equal the arc length over 110. And again, I'm just going to kick this up. So x is going to be equal to 2 times pi times 12 times 110. 2 times pi times 12 times 110. And I'm going to divide that by 360, divided by 360. So that's going to be 23.03834, whatever it is, right? Approximately 23 units. If this was meters, this is meters, right? If this was meters, that's meters. So we've traveled 23 meters around this circle. Let's do, um, let's draw another circle and I'm going to give you the arc length and we're going to figure out what the angle is we've traveled, right? Same as before. So we're going to set up our circle and we're going to go. So we've got our circle set up again. And previously, in the last calculation, we said the radius was 25 and we went all the way here, right? So instead of giving you the angle, I'm going to give you the, the arc length that we've traveled from there to there, right? So let's say if this is 25, let's say we've traveled 112, 0.5 around the circle for us to get here. So we've traveled, if this is in meters again, we've traveled 112.5 meters around the circle and we want to figure out what our angle is theta in radians, right? Well, I'm going to use the same formula. 2 pi r, I want it in radians. I'm going to use 2 pi, not 360. I've given the arc length, I'm going to find the angle. So I'm going to go 2 pi times 25 divided by 2 pi has to be equal to 112.5 over x. And I'm going to do, just to, just to simplify the calculations, I'm going to kill the pi's, right? So x comes up, so this is going to be 2 times 25 is 50, 
Actually, I could kill the twos as well. So twos die as well. So this is going to be 25x is equal to 112.5. I'm going to divide by 25. I'm going to divide by 25. So x is going to be equal to 112.5 divided by 25 is 4.5 radians. 4.5 radians and that's the angle that we've traveled on the circle to have an arc length of 112.5 meters if the radius of the circle was 25 meters okay learn these three equations are understand them you should know them intuitively they should make sense right as for what they were again let's recreate them so you know okay so if you're going to be converting between radians and degrees, you need to use this ratio. Three hundred sixty over two pi is equal to degree over radian okay if you're going to try to do area if the question involves areas it's going to be pi r squared over 360 degrees or 2 pi is equal to area over angle okay super powerful If the question is going to involve arc length, you're going to use 2 pi r over 360 degrees or 2 pi has to be equal to the arc length. over the angle and the angle depends if it's in radians or degrees or if you're given the arc length or what not right we did a couple of questions okay. these are the three equations that were ratios proportionality that you really have to know uh, be comfortable with and you can do combinations of these, right? I could combine area and arc length. I could say pi r squared divided by 2 pi r. That's another proportionality ratio that I have. And that would have to equal the area over the arc length. Okay. And this ratios and proportionality and learning cross multiplication to do unit conversions to jump from one system to another system is again it's super super powerful and you end up using it all over the place and it is really understanding this this concept of you can compare any two things any two systems as long as you have a link in between for our case for trigonometry right now what we're doing is we're making a connection between radians and degrees we're making a connection between area 
and an angle. May it be degrees or radians. We're making a connection between arc length and the angle. May it be degrees or radians, right? And that proportionality has to stay true for whatever circle that we're talking about as long as we're not going outside of that system, right? Outside of that connection. We're for a circle right now, it basically means the radius of the circle has to stay constant, right? For whatever system that we're doing for one calculation, right? So learn these three different equations, I guess, but these three concepts and you can you can combine different ratios. We could have written down a fourth equation where we're comparing the area to the arc length. So we would have had pi r squared in the top and two pi r in the bottom. And over here, it would have been area and arc length. And this can go on forever. You can compare any two things, right? Um, so that's how we do unit conversion. That's how we do converting between radians and degrees. And what we're gonna do in the next video is take a look at some special triangles. And these special triangles are getting into, you know, the core part of where uh, trigonometry comes into play, where a lot of different types of questions you end up getting um, in school regarding, regarding trig, regarding trig identities. And we end up getting uh, some ratios that, um, you know, they get you to memorize. But for us, what we're going to do, we're going to generate a table. And these special triangles, basically, uh, just to give you a teaser, the way it works is we take our unit circle and we take one quadrant, the distance from or from here to here, right? That's 90 degrees. And there are two special triangles we have. One of them is 45 by 45 or sorry, 45, 45, 90, which basically cuts the 90 degree angle in half, right? Because one thing that we like doing in mathematics, we like taking equal chunks out of something. We like taking, looking, looking at a system and taking chunks out, making, dividing things out evenly, right? So we take 90 degrees and cut it in half. That's one special triangle, which gives us 45 degrees. The other special triangle is we take 90 degrees and cut it in three parts, right? And it gives us a 60, 30, 60, 90 degrees and 60, 30, 90. So it takes 90 degrees and breaks it up into 30 degree segments, right? Useful. So that's what we're going to do in the next video. We're going to take a look at our special triangles and we're going to take a look at our trig ratios and find out what our trig ratios, what what the ratios are for sine, cos, and tan for our special triangles. And we're gonna move around the unit circle and we're gonna take a look at those numbers, the ratios, and see how they change, okay? I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.